Hello, my loves. Boy, do we have a great show for you guys today. Yes. Welcome to the Magic Hour, boys and babes. I'm Mercedes Terrell, and with me, my majestic partner in shine, Jade Bryce. You already know. Hi. I'm just so stoked for this episode because we're going to have on one of my very best friends. He's also my mentor, and he's walked me through some really dark times, and I've also shared some really happy times with him. He's such a bright light, and I just know that everyone that's going to hear this is truly going to benefit. For sure. I can't wait either. And after the interview, we'll also be answering some questions from the Magic Mob. Um, Actually, maybe we'll get him to answer those with us. We'll see. And right before leaving you with you, leaving you guys with a magic trick to use this week. You want to just do that again? I can't wait either. This is going to be awesome. Um, And after the interview, we'll be answering some, no, shit, shit, today, shit. Just say that we're going to, just leave that part out. No, I'm just going to not say after. Okay. I can't wait either. This is going to be so awesome. We will also be answering some questions from the Magic Mob, as always, right before leaving you guys with a magic trick to use this week. So, Jade, tell us a little bit about your BFF, Tom. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where to begin, really. He, more than anyone else that I know, raises the bar for how we all should be living. Although I know if he heard me say that, he would point out that I shouldn't be shooting all over everyone. <laughs> right. um, but I met him very briefly about 10 years ago at the White House. We were um, like protesting and rallying to get Joseph Coney, who was the leader of the LRA, Uh, arrested on the count of war crimes because he kidnapped thousands of children and forced them to do god-awful things as child soldiers. So I'm sure, you know, that's a well-known thing at this point. But at the time, no one had heard of it. So we were there trying to get it heard. Mm -hmm. And so I met him there super briefly. Years later, I ended up on his patio in Malibu. Um, He had a, a, a little trailer right on the beach. And right right when we began to conversate, I just, we really connected and I immediately thought I must have spent another lifetime with this person. Like he must've been a family member. He must've been something. And I also, and we still laugh about this, grabbed the notepad and started writing down things that Mm -hmm. he was saying, because I just wanted to make sure that I remembered them because he has that effect on you. His words are so light and Mm life-giving that you just, you take note. You want to take note. So um, me doing this made him feel that I hunger for truth. And he also felt that I was immediately immediately his family or that, you know, I um, had another lifetime with him as well. So we spent the next, you know, we spent the next Thanksgivings and Easter's and New Year's together. And we, you know, he just became my partner in a lot of things. And the rest became history. That's so cool. I love that story. So for real, for maybe just real quick, for anyone listening who doesn't know who Tom Shadiak is, let me just catch you up to speed. Um, I'll list off a few of his most known works, all movies and books, documentaries, which have had an incredible influence on my life from when I was a young kid. Adam said something's wrong with your, oh, um, I know, it sucks. And we need to call Tom. Josh just asked if we were ready. <laughs> So you want to check your settings? He said something's not right with your settings. Okay, let me take a look. Uh, let's see. Cor- so look at your settings real quick. Is it read? Mine are perfect. I no, already looked. No, read what they are. Core audio, built-in input. Mm, no, it's not. It's not core audio. It's Yeti stereo microphone right after core audio. That's why we Hey, we're we're working on it now. Yeah, we're working on it right now. She'll, she'll J- Okay. J- I, I, what? Yours is core audio, Yeti stereo microphone, then it says two stereo and then built in output? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then let me just make sure the Skype has it all right. Oh too. darn. It's no biggie. We can do it. We're gonna do it after. I know I just prefer like the energy difference being noticeable, but maybe you can just pick up that last paragraph instead. Well, I think the whole thing is wrong. 
He said. Oh, fuck. That's right. Damn. Yeti stereo. On your Skype, do you have you have it a Yeti stereo microphone? Yep. All right. That's on the microphone, and the speakers is built in output. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Again. I'm going to look for uh, his assistant because okay. I think they're like they've been sitting there for a little while. I got to shut down. So you, we need to restart Audacity, I think, so that it's a new file. Or what? Or you can no, keep can... yours running, I think. Right? No, you can just leave yours. It'll just, the sound will go. Oh. You know what I mean? Uh, I think yours right. you can keep going, but he's just no, going to have No, because he prefers it when it's the same time. Okay. Well, just in case yours is good, keep it saved, though. You know what I mean? In case there's something in there he needs to pick up from. Does that make sense? God, this sucks. My audacity is acting weird. It's probably because Chris and I were fucking with this trying to reset this thing on eCam today. Okay, I am recording again. Yeah, that's always the first thing I check because... Hold on, just going to do a sound test for Adam just so I can send it and make sure we got it right. Adam, this is my voice. All right, I'm going to hit record again on my new one. And then I'm going to add Chris to the call. Okay, I got to send this to Adam first though, right? Well, I'm going to add him to the call so that we can at least... Because they asked me like 10 minutes ago if we were ready. He's pretty prompt. Good thing we check. I know. I don't need to be ready like right away to check just in case. Because had we started recording with the guest, that would have been really I annoying. Know. Okay, I just sent that to him. So we uh, let him know I'm going to restart my Audacity while we're doing that. Oh, well, I shouldn't have hit record then if you're restarting now. Well, no, I have. I had to send Adam a new test. I know, but why are you restarting it now? I got to restart this. What do you mean? I always just do the same from the test. Oh, I can do that. It doesn't matter. But in oh, any okay. case. Just that way we're on the same time because when we have different time things, he gets fresh. He said well, it's harder to edit. After the test, you have to stop it in order to send it. Yeah, but I just meant don't close it out. Okay. I'm going. It's recording. Okay. Uh, and Ecamm is still recording. Okay, cool. All right. I'm calling him. It looks like my children are asleep. He said good to go. Okay, and are you, are you going to intro Tom while he's on? Yeah. Okay. And you took out the pieces we talked about on that intro, right? So, yeah. So, uh, I, I tried to call him. Let me see what he says because I tried okay. to call him and he didn't answer. So. so, without further ado, let me introduce one of my very best friends. A man who so many of us call a healer. I, I changed that because we said comedies twice. Because we, since we changed it, we didn't catch that we said comedies twice. Okay. Who has freed slaves all over the world. Who constantly teaches us that love trumps fear. Who makes every person around him feel seen and loved. He wrote and directed the world's favorite comedies. His documentary, I Am, and his book, Life's Operating Manual, shakes you awake. You truly cannot stay the same once you encounter his energy. Tom Shadiak. Yay! Yay! Um, Did you reply? I don't know, because I said, I said, click video, and he said one sec, but he was asking me to call. I think he, I think his assistant needs to get it going, and so Mm -hmm. he wants to, like, make sure he's set up. Jade, hi. Hi. Look at um, guys. Hey. 
So if you click video, we'll be able to see you. I wish I, I always want to make the guest big. I know. No, make the yeah. guest hey, small. Hey, what's up? Hey, <laughs> so happy. No, I, I, otherwise I'm staring at Mercedes the whole time. I know. We, we're always, can we're always guys, on here. You, yeah, there we are. We're still, I'm about, I'm plugging, there. I'm plugging in Tom's headphones and I'm about to hit record on this, okay? Awesome. Perfect. How do I, let's see. I don't think you can make it. I just no. did. I so double clicked on him. That makes him yes. the bigger one? Yeah, I double clicked on him and it made us small. Okay. And then I just dragged us to the right. You always say that doesn't work for me though. I know, it, it, it doesn't always. Know, you guys look very nice. I'm doing this without makeup, so. <laughs> <laughs> All natural. Out, I think I know everything to do, so I'll be yeah. right back. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Um, I like his little thing in the background. Yeah. Okay. I can't um, get, well, whatever. Mine's at the bottom of the screen, but I could see him. It just will be a small one. But when it goes on the eCam, it captures all three of us the same Yeah. Ways. I just, I catch myself looking at you instead of yeah, the guest if you're I know. big. It bothers me too, but. Even if I'm big, I catch myself looking at me instead, you know? But the thing is, it's, it's like... not like it matters to the viewer. They don't see the. I know. It's just. Personally. It's... Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. What's up, freaks? Hi. Hi. Cold in my house. Let me see how to do this. Where are you? Look at us all professional. I know. <laughs> What's up, interviewers? Where What's are you? Uh, I am in Memphis. Hold on. Here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just flew in last night. So if I get a little wonky, that'll be my excuse. Oh, we'll slap Tom. You. We'll slap you. I'm you a out. mother of two toddlers. So, there we go. <laughs> There we go. As you can see, I'm watching them right now from the Ooh. monitor. You're watching what? The babies are on my monitor. Recording oh, with Tom Shadiac. Gosh, I know. Freaks. In my closet. Oh my gosh. We just, um, we did, and take a picture of us. We did um, Halloween <laughs> uh, trick or treating, and then I didn't want to be like the mom that just takes it away. So I told them there's a Halloween health fairy that comes oh. and <laughs> refills their bag with good stuff. And I like really filled it up though with really good stuff. Um, oh my gosh, but it has hilarious. helped so much with bedtime because I'm like, if you don't go to sleep, you're not going to eat some of that in the morning. But it's all good stuff. It's like sweetened with stevia and uh, coconut sugar, and you're like, you the know, worst, best, all vegan and worst best mom stuff. ever. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. they were more excited about the Halloween health fairy than they were about the trick or treating. So I did nothing healthy for my neighborhood kids. I poisoned them. Oh, I Tom, you're the best neighbor. I, I gave them a hug, but I did poison them with sugar. I, so. I miss your uh, watermelon seed spitting. And um, Mercedes, you're recording, right? Yeah. We're good okay, to Hi, Mercedes. I Hi. Hi. So recording, much right? gotcha. I finally get to meet you. I know, Tom. Me the same. I feel like I already know you because of all the stories and fun same, adventures my dear. I've heard from Jade. Tom, are you um, recording for sure? Me? Yeah. He's, he's like, I hope so, man. Yeah, Josh, like, Josh, hit yeah, record, right? Let me see if I can move you guys to make sure that. Yeah, if you I'm look recording. at that audacity, it's moving. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, I'm good. Okay, okay, so I'll introduce you because um, I don't want you to get too tired. Um, and if I don't, I feel like I don't even have to tell you what we tell all the other guests, but we just invite you to be as vulnerable and open as possible. And if you choose that you wish you hadn't said something, we can always edit it out. Okay, awesome, great, <laughs> great. All right. So, without Did further ado. Did you edit ado, out the part where I said I was poisoning my neighbors? I'm only kidding. <laughs> That'll go to the bloopers. <laughs> yeah. So, without further ado, let me introduce one of my very best friends, a man who so many of us call a healer, who has freed slaves all over the world, who constantly teaches us that love trumps fear who makes every person around him feel seen and loved. He wrote and directed the world's favorite comedies. His documentary, I Am, and his book, Life's Operating Manual, shakes you awake. You truly cannot stay the same once you encounter his energy. Tom Shadiak. Yay! I had a hard time not crying. <laughs> wow. That's I so was great. so, uh, first of all, honored and uh, obviously uh, uh, moved by what you said. And 
I'm just happy to be here. You guys, I've been a fan of your show since you started. So you're, um, you're like our mascot. You know, she's heard huh? every episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, she sent me, Jada sent me every episode and I find, find you guys vulnerable, which is so important, human and, uh, and beautiful. So I'm happy to be here. What's Thank up? Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. It's been a wild little ride getting to this point, but seriously, thank you so much for all the help you've given us. You've you've listened to the episodes that haven't made it, you know, so <laughs> you know all the really bad ones that we've tried to work through at this point. But also, I just want to say, hi, Tom. It's good to finally meet you, see your face and all that, even if it's just on Skype. And I'm so glad you're here doing this with us. Yeah, we've been third partying this for a while through Jade, so it's really nice <laughs> to meet you as yeah. well. So what do you guys want to talk about? I'm, I'm excited to yeah, be here. Yeah, so um, Tom, our discussion today, these are the things that we talk about without being recorded. So I'm so excited to share this conversation with our listeners. Um, something that really stands out about you is that you truly make people feel seen. Like when we go out to eat, you actually get to know the waiter or the waitress and not just in a small talk sort of way. And when we go to the grocery store, you cause the cashier to light up. Like you ask people how they're doing and you joyfully wait for the answer. And I've seen you during dark times and you still choose to radiate this. And one of my favorite stories is um, how I used to go see you every Monday night at Pepperdine to um, when you would teach. And I remember checking in one time with the security guard and saying that I was here to see Tom Shadiak. And he said, oh, Tom, oh, man, he's one of my best friends. And then later that night, I told you and you kind of chuckled and said you had never seen him outside of the security check gate. And so it just made me like it was crazy to me that someone who only sees you at a security check gate considered you one of their best friends because that's how you treat everyone. And most people would just give their name and, you know, pass on through. And later that night. Um, I laughed because it occurred to me that everyone calls my best friend their best friend, and it made me so thankful for you. And, you know, you make the whole world feel that way. And you're one of my few friends that constantly ask me, how is your heart? And that's what people truly want and what people truly need. And without this, their life can get dark. So what I'm getting at is this is what's missing in the world. How do you stay in this state? Well, if only I was as good as you described me. Um, I <laughs> like that guy. Uh, well, first of all, Jade, uh, uh, honoring you, you bring that out in me. So I think you are also seeing a part of yourself reflected in me. You want that in the world. You want uh, to bring light. You want to leave a room happier than when you found it. Mercedes, I'm sure you're the same way. Now, look, honestly, I don't always meet that goal. I fly a lot. That's enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, there's a there's a mystic mystical truth that I try to live my life by, which is how would you see the world if everything was God in disguise? Mm. So if every person who came in front of you was God, whether you believe in a you know a, the, the idea of God, the traditional idea, or just the idea of an energy, a creative energy, how would you behave if everything in front of you was God? right? Showing you a part of yourself. So if you meet somebody who's stubborn, somebody who's angry, and you become angry, well, that anger's in you. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity. And then that person, the angry person feels a mask away and says, hey, I'm God. I was just, <laughs> this is just an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I, 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 I do my best to, to walk, to, to lead my life, is to treat everyone as if it is God in drag, so I feel like the first part of my question was going to be, you know, noting that, like Jade said, you give almost everything of yourself to whoever's in front of you. Um, you answered pretty much how you do that by treating them essentially like they're you seeing the divine in them, the same divine that lives in you. Right. How do you keep yourself from feeling depleted because you're doing that all the time? And also who gives you what you're giving to others? Yeah, well, let me take the first part of the question, then you can ask the second part again, because I'll, sure. I'll forget it. Um, <laughs> so the first part again was, how do I do it, keep it from being depleted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really strong question and an important question. Um, the commandment, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So there's two parts to that. Love your neighbor, which is what I hope I'm doing when I greet somebody with kindness and openness and seeing them. 
Um, but as you love yourself is an important part that I often ignored when I was young and I would come home exhausted. I gave so much of myself, et cetera, but I didn't give to myself. You've got to always honor what you need so that you can recharge and then reintegrate into the world, reengage. Um, so now I, I just, you know, when I feel depleted and tired, that's on me. I've got to take care of myself a little better. You know, I'll, I'll read, I'll, I'll do my forms of meditation, I'll, I'll walk in the mountains, I'll bike, I'll do whatever it is that recharges me, that reconnects me yeah. and re-energizes me. And then I can reflect that back. That's true, Tom. I actually can't even, um, I can't do a podcast episode without a really strong meditation right before it. Because it's like, you you really can't pour out what's not inside. Yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah, I think I, I need to... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Mercedes, go, please. I was just going to say that I think I need to take that more to heart because I'm someone who has always burned the candle at both ends and I find myself completely depleted and just have to like, my body will get sick. Literally, I'll have to just stop what I'm doing because my body's like, well, if you're not going to take it, you know, you're not consciously going to take the break. We're going to make you essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, symptoms yeah. You, are you, a blessing. You to, yeah, save an end for yourself. Don't burn it. <laughs> maybe at both ends. Burn it, burn at an end and then, and then you know, give yourself, a, 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 you know, Give yourself what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you are also the divine energy walking around in disguise. Right. Right. And so every instinct you have is there for a reason. Oh, my gosh, I need to rest. There you go. Oh, my gosh, I would so love to just Mm -hmm. have a coffee right now and think about nothing. Do that. It's not selfish. Selfish is a small S when you only think about you. Selfish with the large S is when we think about the larger self that connects all of us. Mm. And you've got to serve your highest self as well, your physical self, your emotional self, your spiritual self, to serve the larger self. Mm. So the other part of that question was, who gives you what you're giving others? You guys. (laughs) Maybe it's a who or a what. You used to say, I think, Mary Oliver or Maya Angelou, I remember. You would give to me? Yeah, they were the ones that, like, poured into you. Of course, I I can sit here and name a thousand, you know, mystic saints and sages, but I got two saints sitting in front of me. And it's kind of back to the same question, Jade, that you ask. If everything in front of you is God in drag, then that recognition, that namaste, if you will, isn't that Mm -hmm. what namaste means, I see the God in you, Mm -hmm. recognizing that re-energizes as well right it's all sort of god in the field of space and time in play again i don't say god in a religious sense i don't want to turn anyone yeah. off and not even have ever used that word or heard that word if you You're believe giving in love, away my magic trick for the end of the show <laughs> <laughs> well if you believe in life or love uh, or kindness it's the same thing i just use mm-hmm. a different word there's an yes. energy that we're all a part of that sustains everything mm-hmm. that did somehow create and put all this into motion and I want to serve that energy. And so that energy is always opposite you or with you and and in front of you. And it's here right now with you guys. So you guys are energizing me. You are allowing me to be someone, as my Angelo would say, by honoring me to be on your show. I love that, Tom. Um, so what you're doing right now, you speak beauty when you see it. And my love language is words of affirmation, as you know. So... Maybe that's one of the reasons I feel so cared for by you is because you always, when you look at me, you see who I want to be and you tell me that that's already who I am. Um, And you do that for everyone that you encounter. So uh, have you been able to do this for yourself? No. Hmm. (laughs) I'm not fully, certainly not fully. It's much easier because that requires vulnerability, right? Hmm. That requires me to... um, embrace all my imperfections, all my scarring. Um, and I'm getting better at it. Um, mm. but I would much rather talk about you. So you want to talk about you <laughs> See, I did really quickly. <laughs> so again, that's part of embracing. I don't, one thing I've lost in large part is judgment. Um, and I think it's a big freeing thing. I don't judge myself for not being that giving to myself, if you will. I don't judge myself. I assess myself. I say, okay, this is where I'm at. How's that, how's that working out for me? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of depleting me or I'm really hard on myself and I, I don't walk with enough as much joy as I hope to walk with so I can then make a, a change. Mm. Mm. But judgment is, ah, you suck. You're less than, you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. 
And again, it's an old mystic saying I've read just a few minutes ago. I believe it's from Rumi, who said, where you are right now, God circled on a map just for you. Yes, I love yeah, that. Yeah, so you're in a perfect place, even if you're in a stuck place. It's a perfect mm-hmm. place for now because things need to be realigned. They they mm-hmm. need to be you know, reoriented, and it takes a moment, so you're stuck. So yeah. there's there's decency and goodness to the stuckness. Mm-hmm. So what would you say my problem (laughs) (laughs) what are you longing for what are you still longing for oh boy what am i still longing for um yeah well we had that we we had this meeting the other day um at our company and everyone got a chance to say what superpower would they want one of the Mm -hmm. you guys can answer that too what superpower would you want one of the coolest was travel wouldn't it be cool if you could just so i could just be in a room with you guys like like teleportation Yeah. yeah, I think that's mine. Yeah, I might want that. So there are all kinds of superpowers. My superpower would be to see as God sees. Mm. So, um, and I'm certainly not there yet. So I do, I, I don't, it's not like a seeking anymore because seeking is like, oh, I'm missing something. It's just an awareness that I want to be more and more and more op- open to. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing is friendships are really important to me, but I travel so much, I don't have as much time, and it's, life is about relationships. And, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't have uh, as many intimate relationships as I'd like to have. I haven't been able to be consistent in friendships. So. That's what you long for? Oh, so my that's our, um, our topic next week with Jamie Torkowski is the importance of community. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, so important. Yeah, yeah, and intimacy, which I've told you, Jade, many times. Means into me see. Into <laughs> me see. Yeah. Right? And just, you know, where you're known, where you where you come home to a partner and they know you, they recognize you, right? You, they just, I know you. And so you just feel like see. you. Yeah, That's you Ellen. Think. One of my favorite quotes by Ellen, she said of Portia when she gave her her birthday present was, it's wonderful to be loved. It's, or it's, it's nice to be loved. It's wonderful to be understood like yeah. truly known, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you say seeing as God sees you, I'm imagining that's just seeing without separation, essentially just the oneness. Yeah, that's the, that, that, that would be certainly, um, but separation from anything. Like if I want an outcome, like I, I'm working on a movie right now, I really want it to be good. Um, but seeing as God sees is just, just trust, keep writing, keep working. Mm-hmm. If it sucks, it's going to play some role because all things work together for good. Um, and so just trust. And I, you know, too often see, see and focus on the outcome or, um, yeah, but again, that's separating, you know, separation is you are different, you know, you're different, obviously we're in space and time here, but we all sort of come from the same rooting, same Mm -hmm. energy, different slices of that energy, different colors of that rainbow. Um, but yeah, if you could see as God sees, man, I think you'd be walking around with a shit eating grin on your face. (laughs) You know, so the separation, you know, a, a lot of us are hurting simply with the question in our hearts. How did we get here as a country? You know, the stories of human trafficking, of the crime on black people, of the lack of compassion in our president. It sometimes keeps me up at night and it, at the drop of a hat brings me to tears. And, you know, we're just currently living in such a polarizing world. And I um, something that I love to think about is Mr. Rogers said that when he was a kid, when he saw sad things on the news, his mother would say, look for the light workers. And I do believe that all of what's happening in our country right now is cracking us open. I, I strongly believe that. But it's still so hard to see people hurting like this, this unjust pain and to not feel the chaos and to not feel the depression. And I still, I know when I dance for joy with my kids in the living room that I'm sending out that energy. And I know that when I do meta meta meditation, but still sometimes it's hard to even do that because the darkness can be so consuming. And, you know, the stories of what happened with the kids when they were literally ripped from their parents' hands while seeking asylum and just, they're never going to be the same, you know, and it, it literally just it makes my chest hurt and it brings me to tears and i know we've talked about this before when i got back from vietnam how it just doesn't seem like an even trade um i can't find the light there and so i just wanted to get your thoughts on that and how do you still have hope given all that well first of all i i want to say you are absolutely heard and all your feelings uh i respect um feel them everything you say is worthy of feeling 
that hurt, that pain, that suffering, I never discourage anyone from feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go back to something we said earlier. The person who said the most hateful thing, the most divisive thing, is God in his or her myriad of disguises. The person who separated the kid is God in his or her myriad of disguises. Wait a second, how is that possible? That's the opposite. That's pulling people apart. Who knows what that kid will grow up to be, right? Who knows how that kid will alchemize the pain of his separation into becoming a unifier and a leader in the world? Look at your heart broken open, right? I wrote you this the other night, Jade, right? The hurting heart is the, is the open heart, right? Mm-hmm. It's the healing heart. So I see everything is necessary. Doesn't mean you have to root for it. I certainly don't root for so many things that are happening right now. I want a world where we love each other and see each other. I want a world without walls. I don't want border walls, you know? Nature doesn't have walls. The rain rains, it doesn't respect walls. The sunshine, the wind doesn't respect walls. Right. So yeah. I want that world. and I will work and give my life for that world. But it doesn't mean I have to judge the people who are not in that world yet. They are opportunities. They are pushing us. Remember the word passion. You're passionate about justice. Passion comes from the word pati, pain. Right. It mm-hmm. takes a prickling, right, a, a sting for us to feel the pain to move us forward. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you were for the Democrat candidate for President Hillary Clinton. Look at it this way. If Hillary had won, it's very likely that you guys may never have started this podcast. You might totally. have been you might not mm-hmm. have been moved in your hearts to say, doggone it. We want to put light into the world right now. We're feeling too much darkness. And so what do you say to the darkness? You say to the darkness. Thank you. Yeah, that's con- a tough one because it has to come <laughs> without judgment. Thank you, darkness, because you pushed me into more light. Yeah. I think something you probably heard us say a bunch of times, Tom, since you've listened to more shows than anyone at this point of ours, um, is we talk about contrast sometimes being the almost the essence of life, like needing the darkness in order to see the light or vice versa. And some the mantra I've been living by the last few months is seek the pain for positive gain to what you're saying. I mean, basically, you have to go into the pain and experience it and go through all those emotions and move through it in order to get to whatever is on the other side. And without that pain, you would have never gotten to that next place, because it's just impossible to to have comfort without discomfort. You are a mystic. That (laughs) is a mystical (laughs) saying Uh, to seek the pain is a that's what I'm doing in Memphis. I needed something to reawaken myself as a human being and an artist. I was in comfort for too long. And so, you know, while we sit on the cushion of advantage, we fall asleep. And I didn't want to fall asleep. So I sought something that would challenge me. And it's been really difficult. And I've grown immeasurably from it. So, wow, congratulations, as Mary Oliver would say when she hears (laughs) the truth like that. I also like that you said, thank you for the darkness. It reminded me, I hope I don't butcher this story or her name, but um, in the concentration camps, Corey Tenenboom is how you say her name. Are you familiar? Not familiar. Okay. Well, she, I guess, was in one area that had a ton. She was with her sister, had a ton of rats and fleas and um, like maggots. It was just a disgusting area. Well, she survived the concentration camps and um, years later she saw one of the soldiers and uh, he rec- she recognized him told him that she forgave him they started to talk and he asked what I guess bunk she was in or what area and she told him and he goes oh yeah um, you all were one of the few women that weren't constantly raped because n- we never wanted to go over there because of the the conditions mm-hmm. you know the fleas and and um the major part that I left out is that she was always so miserable because of the conditions, but her sister always said, right. no, thank God for the fleas. Mm-hmm. Thank God for the rats. And she was like, how could you thank God for this? And mm-hmm. then to find out later. So I've always enjoyed that story. Yeah. Remember yin and yang, you know, the yeah. circle and they they go together. So the yang you're talking about that that's causing so much pain again, Mercedes, you said it earlier. Don't, don't see the separation, mm-hmm. right? What is it about that yang to my yin that, I need to learn, open up to what is it revealing about myself, 
right? If you see as God sees, well, if, if, there, if there is an energy that created all this, it must know what it's doing. It's certainly keeping yeah. my body functioning right now. It's keeping the stars in alignment. It's keeping, the, you know, like, like the blood urging and pushing in the veins and the oxygen, you know, moving through the body, et cetera. It must know what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It must know what it's doing, right? Only in the darkest nights can you see the stars. And so, so, you know, all these dark points of our history where there have been, you know, hate crimes against people of color, it, out of them we always see as we look back all this light pouring out, right? Mm-hmm. All this light. So it, it's coming. It's coming. We're pushing and urging. And just like yeah, the I body. Feel it. Yeah, just like the body, when it heals, it has to heat up. You know, it has to push out things that are not functioning, helping the body function. And that's what we're doing. We're pushing things out so we can evolve. Something else about the separation that um, I think of that has to do with you um, is just remembering that everyone is just wanting to be happy. Like every, that's all anyone really wants at the root of everything. And um, one of the first times we hung out on Thanksgiving, we went and served the homeless for Thanksgiving Day and the previous day. And then after that, we went to um, a well-known actress's house that had other actors and actresses there, people I'd grown up watching. And the common theme among people who were literally homeless and eating Thanksgiving dinner in a shelter and then people in a mansion in Malibu was that you could see that they were all just craving happiness, even though it was like so, you would think it would be so separate. Amen. The desire was the same. This would be my, this would be my admonition for everybody that is seeing an, a, another side, like there's a red America, a blue America, a conservative America, um, a, a liberal America, and some would say a sane America and a crazy America, and those can switch, red or blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say go out and make the case for the other side. You must make the case for the other side. What is it that they're afraid of? What is it that they that they're longing for that you asked me earlier, um, Mercedes? What do you what are they longing for? And you'll meet them right there. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a field uh, out out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing. There's a field. I'll meet you. I'll meet you there. Yeah. Right. I'll (laughs) meet you there. So we have to meet each other there and we can't do it by saying you're wrong. Yeah. Right. Here's a here's a, the, the problem. When somebody says you're wrong, we judge. We immediately judge them. So somebody was wrong for separating a parent from a kid. Right now, please don't get me wrong. Quote unquote. <laughs> um, I don't want you to think that my heart didn't break and I wouldn't want to run and give my life to see that never happen again. But the second I say you're an a-hole, um, you're and I start labeling definition being the depth of discovery. I built a wall between that right. person and me. Yeah. So I, I would add, I, I would ask everybody to run out and make the case for the other side and mean it. Make I, lo- the case. I think that's a great practice idea of how to find that inner you know, that common ground. I think with this podcast, as you know, a lot of what we're hoping it's to one do of our here, goals. yeah, is to find those hard places. As we always, you know, use the term cognitive dissonances and and bring them up, you know, and, and sit with it and say, okay, well, let's make a case for both sides. Let's hear whoever we're interviewing side of what the, their story is and, and let our listeners decide for themselves what their liquid truth is, you know, what they're going to move forward with and how it's going to evolve whatever part of their life they allow it to by being. What's why, what's why I've open. had an easy time listening to your podcast, because you come from places of vulnerability that I can relate to difficult relationships. You know, you guys are both, um, you know, uh, models. So you've experienced, mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of, you know, the dark side of male, you know, uh, energy. Um, and you come from a place of openness and, and, and again, imperfection. So I go, Oh, I know her. She's just like me. We're still trying to, mm. you know, walk. That's our goal to make yes. people feel Not less alone, alone yeah. because they're like, yeah. they're like me. Yeah. yeah. So I said, don't feel like I always tell Jade this, like, it's hard to hear, you know, things that float. Everything is everything is peaceful. Yeah. You know, no, it's not really like, like not all the time. It's yeah. not always peaceful. Right. There's yang to the yin. Right. Like, no, I can I can take it in a peaceful way, but it's still there's there's tough stuff. And I like that you guys are not afraid to walk into that. Thanks, so a little bit of a, a turn, but not much. Um, what's something you're thankful for and what's something that scares you tom 
that I'm not thankful for enough things. <laughs> what scares me? <clears throat> I mean, to be honest, it's probably fully being seen, you know, like for all the reason that I, I can go on and on about the beauty of imperfections is because I'm still um, discovering my own and, and embracing my own. So I, I think really being seen, um, you know, um, I lead a very monastic existence. Like, you know, people always say to me, oh, like JD says, so like, oh my God, you're so busy. You're like, you know, you know, they see me in a certain way, but I have a tremendous amount of aloneness in my life. You know, um, the, 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 the journey, I, I, you know, I, I do believe that I'm, I'm, I'm not calling myself a mystic, but I'm, I'm certainly moved by the mystic's journey, always evolved intense solitude. And, and I have that very, um, deeply in my life. And it's, um, it's scary to ever let someone into that idea because I'm always the guy making a joke or as Jade said, you know, offering a perspective that might help uplift someone. Um, but I'm not often seen for, Oh, you hurt too. You're hurting too. I think this mm -hmm. surprises you, Jade. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I remember you said not too long ago, something about that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, so part was it, what scares me and what was the other part was what, what are thankful you, for? what are you thankful for? I mean, you've listed a lot of things already. I feel, but yeah, yeah, you can yeah. go into it more. I'm thankful for you guys. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm thankful for, um, whatever understanding has come to me that allows me to walk into very, very chaotic situations with a sense of peace. And that mm. brings with it a sense of power. I, I'm just not upset by what's happening in the country in the sense that it, I lose my trust for what I know. Mm. I, I, I love I, that. I, 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 yeah. So I'm, th I'm thankful for that, that, um, that, you know, no despair of ours is, Thomas Merton said, can alter the reality of things. We're going through quite a despair, but there's a reality with a capital R that I think I've been blessed to be able to access um, from time to time. Mm. You love that. Um, yeah, I think that's a lot of people's fear is um, to, to be seen. Um, it takes a lot of vulnerability and I, I mean... I don't know how many people truly feel seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, really realize that they're not being seen. You know, a lot of people think that they are, but they they may not realize that until they hear something like this. And then they're like, mm -hmm. oh, a am I truly seen for who I am? So I like yeah, that. They're, you know, most authentic self, too. I think we, mm -hmm. especially us in, in our jobs as models, we've been out here in the limelight. And, and Tom, of course, you've worked with on every big movie. You can list them all. Um all those circumstances you're being seen essentially that might be what most people think of when you say being seen but who you really are like I always think of myself who am I when I lay on my deathbed you know what what is that moment going to bring me what kind of clarity is it going to suddenly come upon me and go wait nobody saw me for this you know like what's the thing I want to pass across mm -hmm. in that moment if it was tomorrow or five minutes from now or whatever it is um that I can do my best to pass now while I still have the chance. You know? Again, a mystical idea, um, my mystical friend. Uh, <laughs> the idea that the moment of death is the moment um, that can coalesce your whole life into a, into a very clear path. What is it that I want when I hit my death? Do I want longing? So that what is it that I long for? I, I let, let me let me go after that or write that or, you know, express that. Um, and, and right uh, now, too. I mean, exactly. You know, I was going to say that's the next thing is live that moment now. I live think the hard part in that, though, is it's as easy as it is for us to say that we're sitting in, you know, living conditions that are where we have food on our table and we have the ability to go essentially get whatever we want or need. But if you're in a situation where it's survival, you know, you, you just trying to put food on your plate for for the evening or you're just trying to make enough money to scratch by on rent or whatever it is you don't necessarily get the chance to have that thought even 
to mm-hmm. go to yeah. those places. And just that's where I see a lot of I, f- I feel it's unfair. Mm. Well, yeah, I don't know about, uh, you know, again, unfair. Uh, I, I, I feel the in, injustice. Um, but at the same time, out of those circumstances can c- come some of our most powerful yeah. mm-hmm. uh, poets and leaders and artists. Um, you're right. It is a bit of a luxury to contemplate because that means I have enough food in my belly to where I'm satisfied enough to be able to contemplate. However, um, I do think that poverty of resources doesn't necessarily have to mean a poverty of spirit or experience or ability to look at the sunrise and see the beauty of, of a creative hand behind it. Um, so, um, yeah, I do. I suppose that's true, because actually, as you're saying, it, I'm thinking of when you are around people who may not have a lot of money, when you go to a country and you visit these people who are living in a shack, you know, on dirt floors and whatnot, they're some of the happiest people you might ever come across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ab- mm-hmm. yeah ab- absolutely. It's a, I don't even like to use the word. I, I live in a very I call it an underserved community. Um, I don't like to call it poor because, man, they're not poor. They're they're mm-hmm. very wealthy, mm-hmm. very, very, very wealthy. Yeah. Whereas some of the wealthy financially are very poor in spirit. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, the, every one in our culture is given this in either high school or college, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is kind of what you were saying, Mercedes. And that, you know, the first need is like for food or shelter. And then it moves into the mm-hmm. spirit and into love and into, and I don't agree. Like, mm. I think that love and spirit can be at all phases. Again, not easy when you're hungry, yeah. Um, but still accessible, right? It's still, there are people who have starved and, 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 and been without to the point of death that have done it seeing God as they go. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I always think that that door is, is open, again, some for some and, and again, remember, everything's yin and yang, right? So we sit in comfort. We may not be able to access, quote, God as easily as someone who's had such a hard day just getting food and they take one bite and then they mm. feel the universe in that one bite. Yes. True. I, um, going back to the scene part, I uh, feel seen by you, Tom, and I hope that you feel seen by me. I know that with my children, it's weird because I, f- I want to be seen for different things to different people. With my children, I just want to be seen... I want them to see me as gentle and present and playful. Um, And sometimes that's where the judgment comes in for me. And that's where I can take myself too seriously, which isn't playful at all, you know, but I can get so hard on myself there. Um, Well, I would I would imagine that what you want, it may not be what's happening. Your kids see you. So I know you want to be all those beautiful, positive things. But I promise you, your kids also see those things, maybe a heartbreak, maybe a hurting moment, maybe a moment where you're not your best self. Mm. And that's cool, too, because they need those things to look at and because they're going to feel them. Mm. Yeah, let them see me cry. Yeah, mommy, I remember that time that you felt this and you didn't talk about it. Well, I'm feeling something now at school. Mm. Like it's just be you like like like, you know, that would be my encouragement is just 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 be you um yeah. you know and when you're when things are quote negative you know just be honest about it and open it, today yeah. was a hard day for x reason or my heart is broken for why you know yeah when i do it's so uh, he always says we'll have a good day tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> cute um he's, he's awesome he's if you name your kid's soul he's going places. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so tom we're both jesus people but we both um, struggle with parts of the Bible. Um, can you go into that some? Yeah, I struggle with parts of the Bible too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're the one that, for the very first person who made me feel okay about that. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so first of all, I want to say this to anybody who is going to not see what I see or disagree with what I see. I'm not right. I have a perspective. I, I am not right. I just have a perspective and you can take from it what you wish and we'll flesh the rest. Um, First of all, I think it's an insanely limiting idea that God wrote one book. I just think it's insane. Like, forgive me, but I do. Because um, 
he or she or it, the force, created everything. So that means your fingerprint is on everything, which means you wrote Tom, you wrote Mercedes, <laughs> you wrote Jade, you wrote the wood that came up in this tree and eventually the artist's hand that made it into a table. Like, you're seen everywhere. Your, quote, word is everywhere. Why is this podcast not a word of God? I'm not saying it's the highest word of God, but why is it not an expression of some people imperfectly talking about their spiritual paths. And so, first of all, it's very, very, very limiting to just think, okay, that's it. And mm-hmm. then you get 10 people in a room. Once you, Here's the thing that I had to let go of before I could be open to the beauty of the Bible and the challenge of the Bible, which is if you look at it as the only truth of God in that sentence without any context, you're in some deep trouble, man, because I'm going to take yeah. you through the Bible, and you are in some deep, deep trouble. You're going to have to hate a lot, murder a lot, kill a lot, judge a lot. And I think it's a book that talks about all of who we are, which is who all of God is, and it's a story that evolves into this amazing soul, Jesus, who came and is, in my mind, the fullest expression of God. And so how can you have a book that says, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge, so many times, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Then you take a book and you walk around and you judge because the book says, and this is what the book says, well, I'm judging you because I'm interpreting this book. So if you got 10 people in a room, they're going to give you 10 different interpretations of the Bible. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. Yes. So my favorite quote in the Bible is not your favorite quote. Christ is all in all. That's my favorite quote in the Bible. Christ is all in all. That means divine omnipresence, right? That, that that energy, that Christ spirit is in everything, right? That's my favorite quote. Yeah. Yours might be something different, you know? And so um, it's it, it, it's, it doesn't reflect my experience with God's creatures and all this multi-dimensional interpretational beauty that he created. If he wanted mm-hmm. us all walking around the same, like, you know, with the same beliefs he did a pretty rotten job of, of <laughs> creating like that mm-hmm. and i believe that this creative force did a perfect job in creating diversity because we are how god experiences t- space and time mm-hmm. right god is yeah. limitless had to limit himself itself the energy into these finite things which is us and now god which infinite can't experience anything because it's infinite right but if it limits itself it can start experiencing right hot nose cold etc and so he, he, she, it gets to experience it all through us. So I don't think it should be, it's supposed to be Stepford. This is it. This is only it. I see the hand written everywhere. And so I see the beauty of the Bible, but I do not take it around and thump people over the head with mm. it. I love that. I, one of the parts that I struggle with most about the Bible, and you use a perfect example that still stuck with me. Um, we both love Martin Spangers so love Martin much. Spangers. Yes. He Martin's was going to hear this at some point. Martin yes, Spanders, of course we he is. love you, man. Yes. Um, he was in Eight you. Simple Rules, if you don't know. He was in Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Daughter, which Tom produced. Um, yes, and we needed 800 simple rules for Martin because he's such a <laughs> Love you, Martin. I love him so much. So he, I remember being in a room with you and him and his parents and you saying, there's nothing that this that Marty could do that would make his parents send him to hell. They love him. So why would a loving God send their child to hell, which is what, you know, parts of the Bible say. And you use that example, and it was the first time that it really made sense to me. I, I may have m- messed that up a little bit. No, I listen, it's not, it's not messed up. You know, this is where people get upset. And again, I want to say, people, I'm not right. If you feel that I'm completely missing it, you know, feel free to send me some love that I would understand further, because all I want to know is the truth. But when you when you break down the Christian idea, you know, the Christian I'm right and you're wrong idea, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. So the reason that God would do that in the Christian story is that because you have free will. Right. You have free will. You you made the choice, Jade. And so you didn't come to the right idea. So sorry, you're done. But wait a second. Okay, hold on. But you created me, right, God? Yeah, yeah, but I gave you free will. But yeah, but you created free will. (laughs) You knew what free will was going to do and you knew what it was going to do to me. That makes you kind of mean because you went ahead and created me. Yeah, but I gave you the chance. But you knew. It's Mm -hmm. like me sending my kid to camp, right? And I know the kid is going to get raped and beaten. I knew, and I still send him to camp. No, I don't. I think that it just, when I started thinking about it logically and breaking it down, I 
I can't access that in my own heart. Maybe it's my own limited spirit, and that person out there will one day open me, but I seem to be moving in the other way, that I don't, I don't see it that way anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you think that when we pass, we go somewhere, like to heaven or hell, or do you think that we just continue? What are your thoughts there? I have no flipping idea. Yeah. I know. I know that energy is scientifically can't be created, destroyed, et cetera. It has to, energy has to go somewhere. I know this, this much I know, and I can't explain it. I've seen my parents die in a room. So they're the only people I've ever seen die. I've been in the room with them. And Falco Terzani, who worked in Mother Teresa's home for the dying, yes, had this experience. Him. Yeah, he watched a hundred people. He held them while they died. And I cannot explain to you what happens in the moment of death. It's just that my mom was no longer there in a split second. Everything I loved about my mother was no longer there. It left. There was a body there that looked like my mother, but it had no meaning for me at all. That thing that we love about people somehow seems to be gone at the moment of death. What happens to it? I don't know. Does it dissolve into the oneness again? Maybe that means there's no Tom Shadiak who knows itself as Tom Shadiak because now I'm part of the all again. The energy going to be recreated in some form and come back in some form. I just know that that 21 grams that they talk about, something happens at the moment of death and I don't know what it is. Um, and and I, we're going to all find out. <laughs> like, we're going to all, we're going to all find out. So well, um, if you find out first, <laughs> which I pray you don't, obviously, <laughs> but let us know if we're off here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we'll um, have Paul Selig channel somebody in. Let yeah, him know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, he only heard, channels the living. I heard him. Man. There's wow, just, so, yeah, there's just so much about the Bible that, um, you know, that's sad. The sad part is there's so much of it that turns people away from God and so much of it that scares people into God because they're afraid of hell. Right. But remember, um, that's not in the Bible. That's in them. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I don't want to be open to some kind of idea about the beauty of the divine or God or some creative force, then I'm going to go to the Bible and say, well, look at this. This is a stupid book. Right. But you can see you can see life and creativity and all those sparks in the Bible. If you take it literally, it's going to be really tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do hear this a lot that people make the argument against, quote, the idea of God, but they eliminate the reasonable ideas of God, which are. This energy, the light at the center of every cell. No scientist can tell you what keeps a cell pulsating, what keeps the electron in rotation around the nucleus. Nobody can tell you. Well, let's call that God. Let's call that an energy that somehow knows what it's doing and knows how to form some kind of life that has structure and eventual consciousness and and can keep a flower budding and dying and budding and dying season after season. Like, what is that? I'll call that God. Mm-hmm. So they... A lot of people will eliminate the reasonable idea that there is some mystery that exists that we're all a part of that seems to have threads that we can't quite understand, intuition that we can't quite understand how you, Jade, are going to know when something beautiful happens to your children, God forbid anything, you know, any, you know, any, you know, injury happens at school, you'll go like most many moms. What, what just happened to, to soul? Oh, soul, you know, fell on the playground and twisted his ankle. You know, these mysteries I put in this big bucket of, oh, well, whatever that is, it's connecting the whole universe. It's keeping the, do you, do keeping you think the, science is getting like a little closer to peeking into whatever that is with the uh, that quantum, what's yeah. it called, uh, particles at a spooky physics, particles at a distance? And, and quantum entanglement, the two particles yeah. separated with ever in relation separated, an infinite distance, you change the rotation of one, the other one changes simultaneously, impossible. Mm-hmm. What about space? Yes. And not only peeking into it, we've been looking, science has always looked at it. We've always had this separation between, quote, religion or spirit and science. And they're the same. Mm-hmm. If the spirit doesn't show up in the physical, then I don't understand. Like, the, it's all a reflection of each other. So if we want to know God, spirit, look at life. Like, that's why I wrote Life's Operating Manual. Just look at life. If you want to know spirit, look at life. Why is it? that we continually tend towards more love in the world. You say, well, what are you talking about? The world? No, no, no. But look at the world's arc. Look at how we started out 200,000 years of us as a species, arguable, but that's around right to now. We, we are, we've evolved so much. When I was your age, guys, and, and, and even younger, 
homosexuality was illegal in a lot of states. You it's couldn't crazy. even think about the idea of two people of a different mm -hmm. um, sexual persuasion um, getting married. You couldn't think about it. It wasn't even a possibility. They were. I was one who judged because I was raised in the Catholic Church. They are sinners. Mm -hmm. That idea is completely flipped on its head. We're all now opening up to seeing the beauty of these unions and this diversity and this wonderful new um, part of humanity that we're, that we're recognizing. Mm -hmm. Well, 150 years ago, Barack Obama would have been enslaved, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, 70 years ago, whatever. And now he was our, he's a beautiful leader that came forward and said, do you see the beauty of people of color? Do you, see what you, you see what you have been crushing and now it's turned into a gem? Right. It's so beautiful. We keep moving this way. What is that? I want to look at that because something created that force that didn't create the force of, oh, wow, we have a murderer. Let's all be like him. Nobody wants to be like him. Right. What is that force? I want to look at that. And that tells me about spirit. That tells me who I am. It's got to walk. Everything you guys talk about has to walk. If it doesn't walk, toss it. Yeah. Excuse me, toss it out or put it in the bin of like, I don't quite understand it yet. Yeah. Um, Give it some time. Give it some time. That gives me hope, Tom. It reminds me of um, The Road Less Traveled, some, the book you, you gifted me. Um, you and I both ask a lot of questions. We often even answer each other's questions with a question. Um, if this were your podcast and we were your guests, what question would you ask each of us? Why did you have Tom on the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> I love that. Um, I would ask this question, um, how has this podcast walked in your life? Mm. My hope, of course, would be that this podcast isn't something that you offer to the world and then you shut it down and then you go about your life and you learn nothing mm. about yourself, about, oh, you know, like, I don't know when you had Mr. Sully gone, if, if you thought you were less than and suddenly... You realize, oh, wow, he honored us. He respected us. I was so appreciative of how he respected you. Mm -hmm. um, so did you walk away with more respect for yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just curious how this is changing you. Because I never have done a film that I, hasn't changed me. I've never done a piece of art that hasn't changed me. How is this changing you? Mm -hmm. I think I that, love that in the beginning, should we answer this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I, I mean, I was just going to say that I know Jade and I had a conversation in the very beginning of us even, you know, the first few weeks of us having the inkling of doing this podcast and starting to just put little bit of bits of the pieces together and Jade having concern, you know, and voicing the concerns that, am I worthy of this? Am I prepared to do this? Is this something that I can fit into my life? And all these questions of, am I enough, essentially? Um, and, and Jade's much better and has always been better at practicing vulnerability. And even though when she says stuff, I'm like, yeah, me too, you know, <laughs> but she's better at voicing them. So I think that was something that we both went into this, just like crossing our fingers and saying, okay, well, the worst case scenario is that we're getting to do this thing together. You know, we haven't been able to hang out this way in in a couple years now um, since she's been with Bellator. So at the very least we're going to get to do this little journey with each other. And if it's not successful, fine. We'll have walked away with having spent time together, having researched topics and people that we really are interested in researching. So it's kind of a win win, but now, now we've been recording for a couple months. How long has it been Jade? Mm, Just like two, two months. months, months? Yeah. yeah. And for me, at least I'd say, yes, it's, I'm already at this place where I'm like, damn, I did not realize how fast and furious the learning and the lessons, the changes that were going to happen. And, and in ways that I didn't really foresee, like even between Jade and I, like how to build a business with another person. I've never done that with another person. Um, how to, and, a, and I've never even thought of doing it with a female, which is funny. So navigating our two personalities, which, you know, we, we have a lot of differences and figuring out how to flow and become more of the sisters from other misters, you know, that, that we already know we are and getting to even bond in the sisterhood with Jade and I, I think has been really cool and something that I didn't know would come so fast. Um, and then just the, the 
cram part like you're talking about earlier we literally have to seek the pain sometimes like i'm gone for two three weeks out of the month each month for the next two months because of my schedule with bellator and traveling international and whatnot so we have to cram in all the interviews since we're doing this as a weekly show within a tiny bit of time and that means it's cram time it's like we're we're in college studying for the finals or something but it's been awesome and it's that thing you have to put yourself you almost have to put yourself uh, put your back against the wall in order to motivate yourself to move forward through the pain to get to the the jam on the other side. Well, it tells me a lot that you uh, are making time for this because you have every excuse to not make time for this. And that's how every great piece of art, every great uh, novel is ever done. You, you, you say, you know what, I know I have a day job, but I'm coming home at night and I'm writing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what I you're doing. That. You're 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 traveling and you're coming home and you're doing your work and you're doing your research and you're getting your show ready to go and you're doing it and it it shows me a lot. Tells me a lot. Yeah, yeah but you, I think I think um, so. In my twenties, a lot of my friends would tell me like that I was such a light, and here in the last two years, a lot of those friends have said, "It seems like your light is gone. Um, it seems like your self esteem has been." Uh, damaged and you know it's been a rough couple years well I remember Tom you telling me I told you I I watch Ellen every day because she makes me so happy and she's so she just radiates joy and you said Jade she's not always happy though the reason why she's radiating joy is because she's stepping into her calling when she's on that show she's doing her purpose and um, since I've started this show a couple of my friends have said man, I really enjoy your show and your light is coming back. So that confirmed in me that I'm supposed to be doing this right now. So. Amen. So you, so you walk with more confidence. You walk with a, 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 a sense that you are where you're supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you this. You answer the phone different. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Your, I always- <laughs> your energy, no, because... I, you You're know, I've so- known Jade, I've known you for a long time. We've been through a lot together. Jade and I, have, mm. you know, we've been breakup buddies yeah. for a long time, and also, you know, seeking and and on a on a path. And um, and your energy is, it's more um, it's, it's a more confident energy. It's um, you. I would have described you before as a, a bit more sad openly, as opposed to now where I can still feel your sadness, but you own it. It's like, I've it's always like, been comfortable with my sadness. Yeah, of course, because I, 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 you know, I uh, that's my middle, middle, uh, middle. Well, actually, my first name would be sadness. Um, yeah, yeah, good so, stuff, man. Because you you asked us that question, I kind of want to turn around, turn it around on you, and ask when you wrote the movies that you've written, the documentary you did, um, the book you've written. Did you have to? find ways to force yourself through some of the hard parts of making that come to fruition or how, what was your process? Oh my gosh. It's the same every time I'm writing something right now. I'm speaking on a computer now, uh, because I didn't want to use my computer cause I have a script in there that I'm working on and God forbid we have a technical problem and my computer blows up. Yeah. <laughs> so that thing is over there. And, um, Yeah, I sit down and, you know, doubt being that pain too lonely to know that faith is his twin brother. I sit and go, this is going to (laughs) suck. Like, but I still write. I still do my job. And then um, and it's pretty much the same every time, except one thing. I've done this so long that I know everything's going to be okay in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, fortunately, most of the stuff I've done has done really well, but I've had some stuff that has not. So I know what that feels like. And I know you survive and you move to the next one. I think and, that's, that faith is huge, that it takes time and, and it's essentially wisdom, right? That you're building to know that getting to the other side is possible every single time. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think what Jim Carrey, uh, my dear brother, said about hope being a beggar is darn close to true. Now, again, I hope is a positive human thing, but... If it at, at, if hope is at the expense of faith, then no, because faith is knowing that you're going to survive this. You're going to you're going to create exactly what you were intended to create. You're going to you know hopefully always do the best you can, and then trust, and then let it go mm-hmm. and trust. That's mm-hmm. faith. So I've been through this enough to know that 
the right thing will happen. I can't make things happen as hard as I try sometimes. I know that there's a lot of belief that you can make things happen. I don't necessarily believe that. There's too many converging energies, yeah. and sometimes it's just not right. And then the thing you didn't think was going to happen, holy smokes. Like, that thing is the thing. It's that's got an exactly energy. what you needed. Yeah, it's exactly what you needed, what the world needed. Was it it's something that a community needed? And it, and it opened up, and you were able to serve that. Cool. All right, so a little bit of a change in direction here. We have a question from the Magic Mob. Spam Sam underscore 15 on Instagram asks, how do we get people to view incarceration rates in this country as a civil issue and not a quote-unquote crime issue? What's his name or her name? Well, his name's Sam. Sam. Yeah. We just call him Spam. Spam Sam. Spam. I don't That's know if you're a ma'am Instagram or name. a sir. <laughs> um, it's a sir. Yeah. You know, I, I'm guessing that this person knew that I just did a film on the social justice. Um, yeah. I've posted about it before. So did. likely. Okay. It's, a, it's a film of, um, where a kid of color, Brian Banks, was convicted of a crime he didn't commit. And I got to see the system firsthand, and it's just really brutal. And the question beneath the question I think he's asking is, um, how do we get to be more human Yes. in the way we deal with people who are broken? If somebody is committing a crime, then in, at some, in some way we failed them, right? Okay, yes, they're responsible for their behavior to a point, but in some way society has to take responsibility for failing to create the Petri dish to raise up a healthy citizenship. And so I love the question because it's just how do we be more human, you know, in this process? And when I think it has to, again, break down to seeing that that person is not a criminal, but a brother or a sister who has a story to tell. And if you listen to that story, you might be able to meet them. Maybe there is a part that's, quote, punitive or needs to be isolated. But at the same time, it must be restorative. You must come like you would come with your own son. Just treat everyone like your own son or daughter. Mm -hmm. Whenever a crime has been committed, you know, sometimes, yes, they're danger. You have to lock them up. But what do you give them so that they can be a flower that grows? Right. You can't make it so dark that they can't grow, that they don't have a chance. Right. And our criminal system right now, sadly, is punitive and it's not restorative in mm -hmm. far too many places. And again, that's a reflection of us, because remember, as you see politics, that's how what you're going to walk in the world through your laws. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see them. They're all wrong. Right. I love what Martin Luther King say. It's very easy to vilify the evildoer. What is incredibly difficult is to understand him. Mm -hmm. mm. So hear their story. Like I wish every quote criminal case. First of all, I would wish we had a, a better word for it because we don't call somebody with a broken leg a criminal. We say you're sick. Um, you are ill. You're not well. Um, and a broken spirit that causes you know, behaviors that are antisocial in a way is, 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 is the same. Um, but I wish every trial started with, um, okay, we have to, you, we have to listen to you. Tell us your story. Mm. Tell us your story. I want to hear your story. No, no, no. We don't want to hear about why you took the purse. I'm not interested right. in that. I want to hear your story. How'd you get here? Yeah. Just tell me about you. Did you have two parents? Was your mother able to have time or was she working too hard or was she drug addicted or or what happened? Tell me, talk to me. I want to hear your story. And we focus on, you know, the, the blemish, you know, yeah. rather than what caused it, what was the toxin underneath. And so I love you, Spam. Thank you. Yeah. You got a good heart. I can, I can tell. We also have a pick your poison from, this is coming from at Shirley 13 on Instagram. The question is, would you rather live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future? A trick question. <laughs> I know. That's why it's poison. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, um, I love Jeff Bridges has a new documentary called The Future's Past because we're in the future's past right now, right? We create right, the yeah. future by how we deal with this moment, mm -hmm. right? But if I if I have to answer it in that headspace, um, it's hard to answer because if I could go in the past and know what I know now, holy I know. smokes. I know, you know, like that would be kind of crazy what what, you know, what you could do. So pro probably if I could know what I know now, I might go I might go back and then which means I'd be dead when this. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it'd also be really flipping cool to see where we're going. I mean, I know where we're going as a species, but yeah. what 
what dips will we have? What, you know, what, what, God, what, what, will we still have animals and trees? <laughs> we will. Yeah. I do believe we will. I do believe we will. I do believe that none of us know how restorative nature can be if we just flip the switch on how we see our separation from nature. If we see ourselves mm. as nature and as we support ourselves, we must support nature. Um, and once we flip that switch, maybe there's a consciousness that nature goes, okay, they're getting it now. Cool. Like, and they, and nature itself can begin to heal and none of the scientists could see it because we still don't know all the quantum things right. that can happen when there are shifts in, in the way we think and perceive. Yeah. Um, but boy, it would sure would be cool to see both. I know. <laughs> I'd well, say I'd go going... back 100 years and figure out how to answer the question when I got to this yeah. point. I've got to answer 100 years. So I do 99.9 years, then I'd get that's the next it. 100 years by answering this question differently. That's, the, that's the answer right there. Yeah. Well, I'm going where you're going because I like having you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so whichever yeah. one you choose, oh. I choose. That's you. Amen. That's Amen. a, You've that's been a such cop a... out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think we're all going the same place, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're stuck like, here. So okay, yeah, you? you're going over here. You uh, you voted this way. You're going over here. I don't yeah. think that's the case. Yeah, I think for selfish reasons, I would pick uh, 100 years in the future, just because 100 years back, I'm half Mexican. I look very Mexican. My name's Mercedes. Probably not doing. I'm probably gonna be in some serious pain, seeking not seeking, just in it. <laughs> Like, right, 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 right. And at the, that's true. And at the same thing, and I'm an Arab man. So, I mean, I mean, I've lived <laughs> some in, in this country, um, um, three quarters Lebanese, but think what you could do, like, yeah, by, by, um, I mean, again, if you knew everything you knew now, you could yeah. create so much Oh yeah. resources for your people to help them, you know, like, let's go to Mexico right now. And like, like, I'm going to take this thing called the internet and I'm going to put it in 99 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it's kind of weird though, Tom, because like, Google. <laughs> when I went to Uganda, I felt like I went back in time mm. because they still stone people for being homosexual or for stealing. And when you speak out about that stuff, I got kicked off a bus. Yeah. So it's almost scary to think about going back to that with the passion you have, mm -hmm. you know? Remember but, this. That's true. It's all, yeah. Like We'd be we burned at the stake as witches. If we get deep into this, yeah. it's going to be scary yeah. to go either way because yeah. what's in the future, you know, and we that we may not be able to connect with because we didn't go through the processes that took us to get there mm -hmm. spiritually emotionally. Um, but think about this guys, a hundred years from now, people are going to look at us and think of how backwards we were, not just because yeah. we did a podcast this way, because we couldn't yeah. all be in the room together by instantly re, you know, organizing our yeah, molecules. Yeah. But because we have certain ways of living right now that we're accepting that I promise you in a hundred years, a thousand years, people are going to look back and go, what yeah. are you telling yeah. me seriously that 70 people had as much wealth, just 70 people, as the other 7 billion people? How did yeah. you guys let that happen? How did you live that way? I hope and that's I where we're at. There needs to be a revolution against anybody with that. But it's a, it's a consciousness thing because we all want to be that person. Yeah. And they're mm -hmm. going to say, really? You guys all like thought that way? They're going to look back at us and go, you guys were friggin' nuts. Right? Maybe and they will have just a whole better appreciation of the time while we were freaking nuts to get us to whatever that hopefully more utopic. That would know. be the evolved way of saying it. I'm yeah. saying it from a very unevolved way. Like, <laughs> freaking nuts. <laughs> yeah, but no, thank God you guys lived this way because you got to experiment with it, which is how I do view it. You got to experiment with it. You saw that it didn't work. The imbalance it created. Well, guess what we created because of your imbalance. We're much yeah. more imbalanced. We're much more. We still have rich people. We still have people without as much, but nobody like it's like nature. There's not one, ne ever one fat oxen, and then the mm -hmm. others are all skin and bones. Or not ever one bird that's swimming in grease, and everything else is yeah. is is you know can't move. Like it, so, we have to become more like that. Yeah. Um, and and again, it's this ex iteration, this experimentation that's not going that well in that regard. That the future generation will change. I mm -hmm. hope so. I mean, we certainly have always, as humans, or as far as we have on record, had this doomsday mindset where we're always looking at this impending doom, whatever mm -hmm. that might be in the generation you grow up in. And we're doing that, you know, now. I don't know if it's just a cycle and this is how this is how humans express themselves. Maybe it's the way that we get ourselves consciously and subconsciously out of the way of whatever the danger might be. When you see movies, especially, you know, through movies I feel like I learned so much too like Elysium where you've got this that you know tiny 
one percenters that move to this other planet and leave everybody else behind. And now we've got Elon Musk building this Mars idea compound, whatever's going on. It's it sounds the same cycle essentially over and over again. Us just worried about everything's going to fall apart around us. But I think you're right. We will, we will as either human beings as a species we currently are, be able to survive this one way or another because that's what we're good at doing. Or being the cancer we are on the other hand of that, the yin yang of that, be able to evolve into whatever our next evolution is, whether that just is mentally or whether that's becoming partly robot so we don't have as much free will as we do currently as humans and we are able to act more like being, you know, the divine and seeing the divine and everything else and programming that into ourselves. I don't know how that comes, whether we consciously get to do that or we have to almost program it in, like I'm saying. Well, I mean, the, the very fact that you are... Um, aware of this and that you you have urges toward wanting to survive i think tells you the answer mm -hmm. your urges are always i want this to go on you know if i have a family or friends or i want there to be a community a hundred years from now i want this to go on that urging tells you a lot so i'm not saying there won't be you know there's some people that believe in the gaia philosophy where it's some <laughs> huge event you know it's gonna have to take six out of seven people so there'll only be one billion people left but boy those one billion We'll certainly have learned that we can't continue this way, that we've got to have a new story that we tell ourselves, that we're not separate, that we're one thing that, uh, you know, there but there goes my brother, there goes my sister, mm -hmm. you know, always a reflection. Um, but it's going to, you know, it, life knows what it's doing. Yeah. Life knows what it's Comforting. doing. We have to yeah. trust in that. Trust. Yes. That's something I learned a lot in Telluride with you, a big message of just us being alone there, but together. I learned a lot of just trust the universe, trust life. Um, so, Not easy. No. It, it, it does. It, it is one of, you know, I don't believe that much in choice. I know this is a controversial topic, but it is one thing how we choose to experience things. So you can experience things as this is the end of the world or this sucks, but it's a part of life and something's coming. Something's coming. Yeah. It. Even and depression that's a huge, is a path huge difference mm -hmm. like this like a lot of people are going to bed tonight saying this country's over like you know the country's over it sucks like this side hates this side and we hate each other and it sucks and if the election does oh my gosh the election didn't so now it's over mm -hmm. and it ain't over it ain't over man uh, you know i'm a yeah. storyteller and uh there's a saying that i love and and again people will accuse me of being um you know, um, an idealist, and I'm not, I believe I'm a realist. Um, but this saying is this, all stories end well. If it's, mm. if it hasn't ended well, it's not the end of the story. Mm. So the mother who loses her child at the Parkland shooting, terrible, but the story didn't end there. She became an advocate for a saner world. Um, and, and we just can keep going. And at some point, even if the darkness steps into more darkness, it alchemizes and starts to move up. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, Tom, there's a few short questions that we like to end the show with. Um, yeah, the first one is... My problem is, is that <laughs> you what's your problem? Well, I'm sure you already know what these listen are. listen to but... the whole show. That'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is, what advice would you give to your 25-year-old self? Uh, probably don't listen to advice would be my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what advice would I give to my 25-year-old self? Um that um, it's okay. Mm. That's it. Just it's okay. Everything is necessary, young Tom. Everything is necessary. Every failure you have, every struggle. I've had 10-year periods of just absolute can't get anything started going, just doors shut in my face. It's all necessary, Tom. It's mm. all necessary. I got you, meaning the I am, I got you. It's mm. all necessary. Is that something that you needed to hear as a child as well? I, it might be a little hard for the child to understand that uh, as, as, a, as a philosophy. I think the child experiences it as the mother's um, consistent love and embrace. Mm. 
um, because the child isn't at that point. What we do when we get older, oh, I've got to have some kind of job or purpose or, um, you know, I've got to succeed. And, and all that stuff is, is, you know, a poison unless looked at in a healthy way. Um, so, yeah, I just uh, I would tell that tell that little freak it's all uh, it's all necessary. It's all necessary. Mm. I love that. OK, so before asking this next question, I want to mention that your book, Life's Operating Manual, is one that I read pretty early on in my own soul seeking, you know, spiritual journey. And many of the teachings from it have been serving me ever since I read it. So thank you for being so open with your story. That was very important to my life. Um, thank so you. The, sure. The question is, if you could have the world read one book, besides Life's Operating Manual, of course, which would it be? Jade, what's the book? The Sunrise. Man. <laughs> I would have them read The Sunrise. <laughs> I know that's a cheating answer, but see, I see scripture, I see wisdom in the precision and beauty and impossible uh, clockwork that is the sunrise every morning. And if you can read that, man, you'd, every other book would come alive even, even more. God, can you imagine how different the world would be if we actually did do that? Every morning. I mean, I totally agree. I think the sunrise is the... Or even just looked at the stars at night yeah. either. Sunset, stars at night. It's just a metaphor for it's all Something, around beauty, us. yeah. The world's yeah. beauty that it, it has to all, offer. It's all around us. Like, it doesn't have to exist in a book in our society. We, we seek wisdom that way, but it's all around us. Mm. I do want to say also that your book... Life's Operating Manual is the most gifted book in our lives. I yeah. gifted it to Mercedes, and we both gift it to, I mean, true. everybody that I feel like is, um, you know, in a place where they're on the brink of, like, that soul-seeking, like Mercedes said, that's, that's like, right away, this is what you got to read. Well, I appreciate that. That means a lot. I mean, you know, that's 25 years of me, uh, you know, just wanting to understand like i always wanted to know what's true and i'd been taught so many things that just didn't bear out um what success was and what it was to be human or an american or a man or a citizen or uh, you know it just i had to it's what you know richard Rohr says there's three phases construction deconstruction and reconstruction and so they mm -hmm. constructed this you know you're catholic this is what it means to be a person who's god fearing and this is what it means to be a success and i had to break all that down yeah and then this book is an offering i hope and you're telling me you know you're reflecting that it it has some value to say this is what i heard when i broke all that down like i heard these other things that felt more powerful it's so much, so relatable because the fear and truth dialogue is it's what's in our heads all yeah. the time, you know, yeah. um, yeah. that's my, one of my favorite parts. Um, and I, I have the unedited version of the book also, and it's one of my favorite wow. items in the house. <laughs> wow. well, you know, the fear and truth dialogue is also that I think the scariest for a lot of people because it, they, you know, we all have those questions, like you said, right? So you say like, what if this podcast fails right a lot of people don't go to the next place like and say well i want to answer that and that's mm -hmm. the, the fear and truth truth will say well tell me what happens yeah and yes. most people don't go to that place and so truth will say and so the fear and truth dialogues are scary right um because when you present something like okay our economy can be reinvented in a more just way oh no it can't well, why can't it and then it starts to pick it and look for something that might be more true or more powerful. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I love that it shows that you guys have the courage to ask the questions, you know? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like I told Harold, you know, Harold's a good friend of Jade and mine. He donated a kidney to a stranger and Harold was going to make a life change and become a part of this conversation that I have through who I am. And, you know, and he's always talking about this stuff and such a compassionate soul. And he said, yeah, but I'm so scared of, you know, like doing this. Okay, Harold, what will happen if you do it and it just fails miserably, what will happen? And he thinks for a minute and he goes, 
come on, take me to your worst fear. He goes, I'll starve. My family will starve. I go, okay, let's, okay, that's valid. Let's look at that. Do you have a brother that has money? Yeah, yeah, my brother's got plenty of money. You think your brother would let you starve? No, he'd never let me starve. You think I would let you starve as long as I have money? Mm -hmm. No, no. So do you actually think you will starve? Is this just the fear you haven't looked Mm -hmm. at? And you go down the line, and then he gets to, oh, I I think I need to try this. No good excuses left. Right. The fears aren't, they, they don't hold up. Yeah. So yeah, and when you, you at, when you continue to ask the questions, you know, truth always wins over mm-hmm. fear. It's more powerful. Mm-hmm. It's just more powerful. And if there's a fear that's more powerful than truth, then that's what's true. If there's a lion coming mm-hmm. at me and I need to run, well, that's true run. right now. <laughs> I'm get out of here, right? For right. Sure. So, yeah. so you know, truth is always more powerful. If fear was more powerful, we'd have a world again that would be bending not towards justice. The moral arc would not be long and bending. It would be going the opposite direction. Well, our last question for our guests is, um, if you could whisper one phrase to everyone on the planet, what would it be? You already are. Mm. We all need to hear that. You already are. Oh, but I'm not successful. I haven't sold the movie. I haven't. You already are. You're it. You're it with a capital I. <laughs> like, <laughs> like in you are the same energies that created the universe. In you. Yeah. Like just look at one cell. You already are. Yeah, you taught me like, that. It's, that. it's that idea of being perfect. And in process at the same time, life mm-hmm. exists in the belly of a paradox. You are you are it. At the same time, you're still in process. You guys are creating a podcast. I'm writing a movie. This process is the play, you know, the spirit in space and time dancing. Yeah. But we're it. <laughs> we're it. <laughs> like, we're it. Yeah. I just love by that. existing, I suppose. And just by having the desire in I you. I am. I mm-hmm. am is the root of existence. I am is the original utterance of God being human being, as opposed to just human doing, which is part of the paradox. You are humans doing, yeah. but the being is the undergirding, right? You already mm-hmm. are. You're, you're that. Look at that. That's so cool. Okay. I love that. Well, Tom, perfect, Tom, normally at this point in the show, we'd, we'd ask where people can find you on social media, et cetera. But when it comes to the interwebs, you seem to be a missing person. <laughs> so you want to tell us why? <laughs> I'm pretty dark on that. Um, <laughs> I used to say, like, I'm more interested in the Internet, um, Mm. I-N-N-E-R. But you know what? It's a tool that my stubbornness has to look at, and I will soon, and I'll I'll get on the twits. And (laughs) and, and, um, not sure I'll get on Facebook, but um, maybe when they come out with Soulbook or something. uh, You know, (laughs) Facebook just has, like, a a resin. I don't know. It's a tool. I shouldn't (laughs) judge. It's a tool. So I'll be there soon. So... This is one of the things, if you go back to the question, what are you scared of? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I'm honestly afraid of, of most social media most of the time, too. I'm just like always putting it off. When can I be done? Do you guys it? look at stuff, though, and look at like, because, again, it's, it's, there's so many energies that come at you. You're this, you're that, you know, and, and, and golly, I'm such a thin skinned, you know, like. You gotta I'm look at this. I feel everything like it's hard. I know. You, you gotta know, look you at guys, the top go, half, top half of the internet. So the bottom where all the comments are scrolling through. That's what you don't look at. So the top half meaning what? What does that the mean? The top just half like judge, judge told you before. Yeah. Just don't read the comments. Yeah. Right. Just the right. content of whatever whoever is trying to put out there, and then, you know, you just right. leave the comment section alone as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, but yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah, we have to interact though as well. So there's, I mean, there's good and bad. We, you get a thicker skin, I think, after the practice. Seek the pain, Tom. Seek the pain. You know what? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> like I thought, uh, you know, I would get a thicker skin the longer I was an artist, but it seems to be the opposite. I really? feel everything even more intensely. Um, so in that arena, I'm not huh. yet courageous enough to maybe seek that. You suck, Tom. Um, but I love that about you. You. When you're listening to someone talk, you make a noise. I don't know if I can mimic it, but it's like a, like a, almost like a grunt, but it's not a grunt. It's like a, mm, like that. Like, it's like, you can't, you can't stay silent when you're hearing something beautiful. Cause, and you're like, 
that noise comes out because you're feeling it mm-hmm. and you'll you'll mutter sometimes that's beautiful and then I've seen you also you and uh Folco you know while eating dinner you're just talking about something and I look over and you both have tears on your face just because you're feeling it so much what you're talking about and so I don't if social media is going to give you a thicker skin then don't get it because uh, <laughs> yeah well, well said I appreciate that yeah i I've learned to see the beauty in in in, in tears, and uh, I, I I hope that a hundred years from now we don't say to each other what's wrong when somebody's emotional. We yeah. say, "What do you feel? Just what are you feeling? Like, yeah. do you want to talk about it or what you know, are you what feeling? Do you, yeah, what do you need? Oh. What are you feeling? Like, That's how's your heart? Such yeah, a good of, magic yeah. trick, Tom. <laughs> That's your magic trick for today. <laughs> Just ask how are you feeling instead of what's wrong. I love that. Yeah, I do love that. So, Tom, before we we let you go. Um, I don't know why I feel emotional, too. I feel like I I already know you so much, Tom. Um, I just want to say that what you've done with the time you've spent here on this planet has most certainly raised the vibration in the world around us. Um, I know that without you having existed here in this exact time and space, my life would have been less vibrant. I, I might have been unable to find even so much joy in comedy without knowing your work. I might have even laughed less during my lifetime for sure. Actually, I know that's the case. Um, And when it comes to your more serious works, I want to sincerely thank you for making me feel less alone and maybe even less crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like we were saying before, I know that reading the fear and truth dialogues in your book, I was able to, have some sort of proof that other people have those type of conversations in their heads too. The messages you put across in many of your works have been really fantastic guiding stars. So thank you for being my teacher too. And last but not least, I just wanted to mention that all of the beautiful influence and impact you've had in and on Jade's life. I've actually been fortunate enough to be you know, close enough with her and spent quite a lot of time close enough to that light that it's shown onto me too. So thank you for being you and for coming on our show today and sharing your very bright light with us and our listeners. We appreciate you. Wow. Yeah, well, I was trying not to have that little grunt as Jay <laughs> described, but I was interiorly grunting. Thank you. That you, 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 uh, You've made my uh, incarnation, okay, <laughs> as opposed to just my day. Uh, thank you, Mercedes. Sure. Thank you. And Tom, you know what you mean to me, and I don't know what I would be or if I would be without your friendship, so thank you. And I'm so glad that you came on, and I can share. I feel like I'm always like, well, Tom says, and well, Tom says, <laughs> and now I can just say, Tom's talking, listen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys, this has been such a joy. I've already told you one of my challenges is how alone I am. Would you mind if we did this tomorrow? Okay. I'm just, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You've put up with me enough. So, no. so, uh, so thank you. You guys are such a blessing. And I'm really happy for what you're doing and how authentically you're, you're putting your voices out in the world. And, uh, you know, Jade, to see you grow like this is just such a blessing. And Mercedes, man, to feel your energy and to hear that mystic just, you know, from some other infinite place, you know, we see that same thing, you know, to see that connection is just just awesome. So, um, all right, cool, man. Thanks, um, Tom. I'm go right, Ace Ventura weeks. 3. Um, I'm only yes. kidding. It's not it's three. Yeah. <laughs> well, after, it. after we watched Lion King, you said you were going to do that. <laughs> I wish it was Ace Three, Jim. If you're out there and you want to do it, I've, I've, I've got we got Please. really good. We so, want you to do everybody, it. Everybody wants to see Ace Three. It's oh true. Oh my it's god! Like it's time. Movie. This is he the time has for the it. best idea, and I won't say it. But we yeah, watched yeah, Lion King, idea. and it was his first time ever seeing it, which okay. I was honored, by the way, yeah. to be sitting next to someone their first time watching Lion King. Um, <laughs> And he had a great idea for it, which yeah, 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 you got to yeah. do it, especially well, right now it. with the state our country is in. Do it. All right. Well, get Jim on your show and talk him into it. Um, so I'll close with an Ace Ventura. All righty then. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye Perfect. now. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I I'm appreciate it. I'm going to skip a picture of us really quick. Sure.
<laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what I look at when I... I don't know. So, um, Tom, do you know what to do? I hope so. I know I, I close Skype. I hit stop record. And then I go up to the file and I go down to, what is it? Export. Export as Export, wave. And then I go to uh, wave. Yeah. So you don't, you don't yeah, have Tom. to, um, if you want to walk him through it and make sure Adam gets it properly while we're on the phone, we can still do that while he's on Skype. Whatever. I mean, if, I if you. It, so I, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not usually confident with this stuff, but I'm confident with this stuff. I just like not tonight. want to lose um, the file. <laughs> no, like, I definitely want to lose the file. So I'm going to walk through it again. I'm going to close Skype. Okay, we're going to say goodbye to each other. And by yeah. the way, you guys, you're ama- you're really wonderful. It's really wonderful to talk with you. Like really, Thanks, like Tom. You, you know, Jade and I have a relationship. That we're we're you know we're deeply connected. Mercedes, I feel really blessed to know you now in this way. And Appreciate um, it. I think you guys are really good for each other. This is just for you, not for the podcast. You're like perfect for each other because Mercedes, I can tell like you are a mystic and, and, but you're a straight ahead mystic. Like you're very practical. You're like, you are like, get this fucking shit done. (laughs) And Jade is just like this light bearing being who's so sweet and gentle. And so you both need each other because Jade, she gives you that like, all right, let's go. Let's move. We got to do this. Like, let's move. And then you give her this softness, which she, which she is, but it's deep down underneath all this stuff that happens in life. So you're perfect for each other. It's a really nice couple. I appreciate Thanks, that. Mom. We're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, we've I had feel. a lot of fun with it over the all the damn years now that we've been together. So it's been a cool yeah. ride. Yeah. This is going to be right. one of those things, like I said, on you know your deathbed, you think back on and go, that that worked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that uh, part was no regret. That's something that I told told Jade the first time I saw or listened to your uh, podcast was. Um, I like you guys and, and your voice was the first one to come through because you're like a person. Like you're not like, you know, some of my friends are on spiritual podcasts and everything they talk like, this, <laughs> you know, and like, oh, you know, and you're like, you know, like, okay, look, like, can, you know, what time is it? Can we, you know, like, I got, <laughs> let's move I, on. I <laughs> that's and, funny and you that's say like, that. My like doorway to so many people, like, yeah. and then you talk a mystical thing. Like I think about my deathbed and it's like, oh, <laughs> Well, I, I feel better say, hearing that from you because uh, what Jade, I was telling you like two days ago or something, my mom's like, ah, she finally figured out how to listen to the podcast. And she's like, uh, I just wanted to tell you before you hang up and I'm trying to like, get off phone. I got 500 other things to do, you know, and she's like, well, before we hang up, I just want to say I really love listening to Jade. She's so soothing and calming to listen to. And I cannot stand listening to you. You, <laughs> you, you break up the sentences and it, it's so hard to follow your train of thought. And I just... I can't, and then and then she turned on her podcast while we're talking, so it's like talking over. I'm like, mom, turn it oh off. Oh my I can't god! Hear you. And oh, it's going at goodness. lightning speed. She has it like it set at 1.5 or whatever. She's like, I had to turn it faster because you talk too slow. I just can't take it. Oh my god! <laughs> well, so thank you, mom. That's I mean, again, you whenever you get there, thank you, mom, because all <laughs> of that is why I'm doing the podcast. You know, <laughs> that's why I do my stuff. You know, because nobody heard me, and yeah. so I want people to be heard, and so I want to do things that allow myself and others to be heard. So, yeah. so it it's just, in you too. So we have, we pretty much all got the same parents. It's like, literally true. Yeah. One way or another, they'll get you. Right? They'll get yeah, you out one way or another. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> so, but I think I'm confident, so I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. close Skype. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to hit the stop record. I know which one it is. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go up to the bar, the file, and I'm going to go down to export. And I'm going to go to WAV, wave. Uh And then I'm going to name it. And it's going to live on this computer. Yes, that's perfect. Just uh, call or text if you get stuck. You want me to do it right now? Well, if I screw up, then I'm going to do it like and be fine. I can see the buttons. I trust (laughs) trust you. All right. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I appreciate you guys more than uh, more than I, I can express. So, so thank Thanks, you. Tom. Well, that was Mercedes just the most awesome test. show ever. What we'll do, do, uh, do we'll do another one next year or something after you do yes, a whole tally sure. of them. We'll see how we're different. Yes, you for have sure. to be our yearly guest. Yeah, I, I would love that. I would love that. So yes, thank you, Tom. Okay, okay. love you guys. Love you so much. Bye, see you in a couple uh, weeks. Yeah, yeah, thank cool. You. All right. Okay. Peace, peace. All right.